Hello everyone. My name is Hikyam Kim. I am staff scientist at Grant Berkeley National Lab. The object number of this presentation is A020169. Uh, today, in this presentation, I'd like to explain how does the collection of its basis determine the electrochemical properties of the capsule materials for rechargeable batteries. As you might know, and as you might agree, the lithium charger battery market is keep increasing nowadays and expand to the larger scale application, including grid and electric vehicles. In this respect, there is a still debate that if uh, lithium resources can meet the such large scale application. Therefore, many researchers, including me, are searching, searching for a low-cost MS strategy materials such as sodium ion dischargeable batteries and potassium ion dischargeable batteries. In this talk, I would like to introduce why potassium ion battery is an uh, alternative MS storage system. First of all, the potassium resources is also abundant, comparable to the sodium resources on Earth. And Potassium resource is much cheaper than lithium resources, as you can see in this figure. Another good thing is that the potassium ion battery do not necessarily to use cobalt elements in the castle as a uh, redox active element. Actually, the lithium ion battery system can be commercialized because of the development of not only the graphite, but also the lithium cobalt oxide. However, the lithium cathode materials should use cobalt element as a redox center at the cathode and miss some part of them. However, if we move to the potassium ion battery, there are many other options, including titanium, vanadium, chromium, mang manganese, and iron. Therefore, we can reduce the uh, cathode production cost further. Another good thing is that potassium redox uh, potential I mean, the standard redox potential is much lower than sodium and even comparable in the lithium metals. In specifically, in the carbonate based sorbent system, the potassium redox potential, standard redox potential, is even lower than lithium metals, which means that potassium ion battery can have higher working voltage and, and potentially. The best thing is that the graphite anode. The lithium ion battery can be commercialized because of the development of graphite anode, as I mentioned before. However, when you move to the sodium ion battery system, sodium ions cannot intercalate in the graphite system, so we cannot use graphite as an anode. Instead, we have to use uh, expensive and uh, low dense hot carbon anode. However, Interestingly, the graphite can store potassium ions reversibly and delivering high capacity of about 250 milliamp per, uh, per hour per gram and with a low working voltage of 0.2 volt. So we already have a good analog system. So what we have to do is design and develop an appropriate castle materials to join better performing cathode materials, we have to understand how the crystal structure affects electrochemical properties of cathode materials. Uh, normally, the cathode material of the charger battery consisting of three elements. One is the intercalate ion species, the other one is the transient matter, and third one on ion framework. So we have run that the transient matter species can uh, determine the electrochemical potentials. So in this presentation, I would like to more focus on the effect of the intercalation ion species and on ion framework to fully understand how these uh, structural factors determine and affect the electrochemical properties and performance of the rechargeable battery cathode materials. So first of all, I wanted to show how the global structure affects electrochemical properties. In more detail, I wanted to explain why rail oxide 
are not good chance of candidate for the potassium ion battery. Why it has been widely used for the lithium ion and sodium ion batteries and shows a great success. So ray of transient metal oxides are promising cathode candidate for the two and sodium ion batteries. Because they have lack of the active potential metal in it, so they can make a capacity in course. And two-dimensional lithium transport channel can provide excellent ray capability. And rigid oxide framework can be maintained during the charging and discharging and guaranteeing good cycling stability of this type of materials. This is why many people work on these layered materials, not only for lithium and sodium, but also the potassium ion batteries. But our recent work found there are two main problems when you use this type of wave material in potassium ion batteries. The one is that when we synthesize potassium red oxide, we always have potassium deficient composition. And the other one is slope the voltage curve, uh, slope the voltage, voltage curve. Uh, even if we control the transient matter, change the transient matter and composition, we could not uh, successfully uh, flatten the voltage curve. So first of all, the potassium deficient composition. When you take a look at all the researchers, including uh, our group's paper, uh, all the potassium layered oxide materials have potassium deficient composition. In this table, you can see the maximum potassium content per one transient metal is only 0.75. We could not overcome these issues. So why the potassium deficient composition is problematic? I bring two examples. One is P2 type potassium cobalt oxide, and the other one is P3 type potassium manganese oxide. So as you can see here, in these two materials, the first charge always, first charge capacity is always lower than the sub subsequent charging and discharging capacity because we have a smaller amount of potassium in the pristine state as synthesized. It means when we make a real practical vacuum chair type potassium ion batteries, uh, we need pre potassium process or potassium matter anodes, which can be dangerous because the, in the rocking chair type potassium ion battery, all the potassium ions should come from the cathode. This problem is related to the typical rail structure. Uh, in the rail structure, one layer is fully occupied by uh, transient matter, and the other layer is occupied, fully occupied by alkali ions, such as lithium and sodium potassium. Here, the potassium is much larger than the QN sodium. The closed pack potassium layer will have a very unstable state because potassium potassium interaction will be much significantly larger than the QN, the QN, and sodium and sodium. So, to understand this behavior, we compute the structure of the of the material in stoichiometric composition with a different kinds of uh, transient matter or the cation in transient matter size. So this figure shows that how the potassium-potassium distance affects the stabilization of layer structure. Here, the x-axis is ion radius of cation in the transient matter size, and y-axis shows the distance between nearest neighbor potassium ion. In the larger cation system, here, potassium-potassium uh, distance is larger enough to stabilize the layer of structure in the stoichiometric composition. However, when you take a look at smaller cation system, uh, such as vanadium, uh, iron, and titanium, and manganese, nickel, and cobalt, then the potassium-potassium distance becomes very short. Then make layer structure are destabilized. Instead, they form non-layered structure where the potassium-potassium distance becomes much longer than in the rail structure. Therefore, these uh, non-layered structures can be stabilized 
in the stoichiometric composition. Let's take a look at how the non-layered structure, the ground state structure looks like. Uh, there are two typical structures. First of all, in the left-hand side, the transient metals sit in the uh, pyramidal side, and they are uh, not closed packed, and they make a large void between this unit. Therefore, potassium ions can sit in three-dimensional ways, and potassium and potassium distance becomes much longer than in the rail structure. And similarly, in the right-hand side, the transient metals sit in the tetrahedral side, and they stay up connect with each other and form a very large void spaces for the potassium ions. So potassium ions can be seen in three dimensional ways and have a longer potassium potassium distance than in the rail structure. That is why these materials can be stabilized while layered material layered structure cannot. In this calculation we also found a very interesting thing that is chromium C first can form the rail structure in the stoichiometric composition, even if chromium C plus is uh, even smaller than iron C plus and titanium C plus. So based on this computation, we have synthesized the potassium chromium oxide in stoichiometric composition. Uh, based on the excited refinement, we found that this material belongs to the O3 type structure because uh, potassium ions sit in the oxide side. So we call it O-type structure. And oxygen stacking sequence follow A, B, C, A, B, C. So there are three di uh, different uh, lifting units. So we call it O-3-type structure. And in this structure, chromium sits in the oxide side. And the, uh, the, uh, the particle size is estimated by around, to be around one to two micrometer by SEM. So we use this potassium chromium oxide as a cathode material without any modification. Uh, the OCP uh, is measured at around 1.6 volt and for charge capacity is around 140 mA per, per gram. And the box of charge and discharge capacity becomes 90 mA per, per gram with an average voltage of 2.73 volt. And it shows a reasonable cycling stability of 20 cycles. And we can see the charge profile and discharge profile shows identical. It means the charge and discharge process is highly possible. And right hand side picture shows the QDB curve by differentiating charge and discharge curve show and showing the oxidation and reduction field. Uh, we found that oxidation and reduction pits are well matched with each other. It clearly shows that potassium extraction and insertion behavior is highly possible. And we also observe multiple oxidation and reduction pits here. It means that during the charging and discharging, there are multiple phase transitions. So to confirm the uh, structure change, we have used in-situ X-ray depression analysis during charging and discharge. Uh, when you take a look at the uh, low angle region, we found that the zero zero at peak moved to the low angle during the charging. So it means when you remove the potassium from the structure, the interslab distance increased. At the same time, the excited pattern of the higher angle uh, changed significantly. And we found that O3 uh, structure converted to, to the O'3 prime and when the, we removed a small amount of potassium from the structure. And when we removed further the potassium from the structure, it converted to the P3, P prime 3 and P3, P prime 3 and P3 structure. And at the top of the charge, we observed O3 type structure. And during this charge, the territory LP returned to the original state. And at the same time, O3 P O3 structure converted to P3, P prime three, P3, P prime three, and O prime three structure. So it clearly shows that the charging and discharging is highly possible in potassium chromium oxide system. So when you compare this system to the sodium version, we 
clearly find that potassium chrome oxide shows a more a complicated phase transition as a function of alkali ion concentration in this material. For example, the sodium chrome oxide only uh, have three different structures as a function of sodium content, O3, O3, and P3. However, in our potassium system, it has multiple phase transition and more complicated phase transition as a function of potassium content. It clearly shows that uh, in potassium system, the potassium-potassium interaction is so strong, they have very strong potassium vacancy ordering in it and leads to multiple phase transition, which is more obvious than the sodium system. Uh, previously, I have mentioned the slope voltage profile is another very important problem of rare the material. So in this slide, I have compared three different uh, materials of rare cathode for potassium ion batteries. They are P2 type potassium cobalt oxide, P3 type potassium manganese oxide, O3 type potassium carbon oxide. Regardless of uh, oxygen staking sequence, P3, P2, P2, P3, O3, and regardless of tension method, cobalt, manganese, and chromium, and regardless of potassium content in the pristine state, they all have the same and similar uh, slope to voltage profile, as you can see here. This slope to voltage profile can come from the strong potassium interaction. And the problem is that slope to voltage profiles limit their reversible capacity and working voltage. So let me clearly say the slope to voltage profile will limit capacity and voltage and therefore energy density. The reason is that we have to limit the voltage window because uh, we increase the voltage because of too high or too low, the electrolyte will become pulsed. So the sort of the voltage profile will limit their capacity and voltage as well. So let's see the lithium layer materials first. Lithium cobalt oxide and ZM has a very uh, flattened voltage curve at high voltage. And in the sodium battery, sodium layer the material has sort of the voltage profile and it becomes much worse in the potassium ion battery system. So lithium have high voltage and plug voltage, and sodium has slow voltage, and it becomes worse in the potassium ion battery system. This slow voltage is created to the low voltage and smaller capacity. Here, so here this figure shows the result. The rail material in lithium battery has high voltage and high capacity, but in the sodium battery system, it has voltage lowering and capacity lowering, and it becomes worse in the potassium ion batteries. So potassium red materials are not longer good cathode candidate, while it, in the lithium battery system, rayon is very good. Then why, what is the origin of this behavior? The strong potassium potassium depression that more slope voltage profile. When you take a look at the rail structure, the alkali ion such as lithium in lithium cobalt oxide sit in between the tension metal rays. And lithium ions will be close packed in there. So there should be strong potassium potassium interaction. But slight distance is not that big. So electrons in the oxygen and ion can screen out this lithium lithium interaction, repulsion means. However, when you take a look at sodium version and potassium version, the interstellar distance increase significantly because of larger size of alkali ion size. That is why the screen effect reduced in the potassium cobalt oxide. That therefore the effective potassium potassium interaction is much larger than lithium and lithium and sodium sodium. So we have around that where the material is not a good cathode candidate in the potassium ion battery system. So here, I would like to suggest polyanion groups are good potassium cast candidates because of their large void spaces and three-dimensional potassium arrangements in it. 
As I mentioned before, the red material suffering from close pack alkali ion layers. Uh, yes, uh, the close pack potassium ion layer. Two dimensional arrangement of potassium ions in it. So we have to move on new class of materials that can have three dimensional potassium ion arrangement in it. And I would like to suggest polyanion is a good cathode candidate in this respect. So based on this idea, simple idea, we have a screening as good cathode candidate from the materials project and ICSD. Here, we only consider the potassium containing and transient containing polyanion compound first. And then we only consider the other active transient such as vanadium, chromium, manganese, iron, and nickel. We uh, intentionally exclude cobalt because cobalt is very expensive and toxic. And we consider the stability screening that has a uh, low formation energy. And we consider steroid capacity that is higher than 120 mg per gram and voltage screening, which has a reasonably high voltage, which should be lower than 4.7 volts. Because beyond this voltage, the electrolyte will decompose significantly. And lastly, we only consider the material with high energy density, which is larger than 500 water work per kilogram in the cathode level. In this uh, criteria, we found three interesting materials. First is KVPOF, second is K3V3PO44, and third is KMLSO4F. Among them, we have successfully synthesized KVPOF so I wanted to show the result of this material. We use KF and BPO4 as uh, uh, precursors and use conventional solid state method. And from the XRD pattern, uh, we found there is no significant impurity in this material, and therefore we have pure pain. And based on the uh, refinement, the structure shows that we pure we overact two octahedron is interconnected by pure potatahedron, and they form the uh, open space in the framework, and therefore potassium ions is in the three-dimensional way. That is why potassium potassium distance is much larger than in the rare material. For example, the potassium potassium distance in typical rare material is around 3.2 ohms. But in this structure, potassium potassium distance becomes about 4.0 ohms, which is larger than the rate of the materials. So we expect this material will show high voltage. So we use this KVPOF without any modification as cathode for potassium and batteries. We use carbonate based electrolyte and potassium matter anode. The first charge shows. Uh, 140 or 145 mega per gram, and reversible charge and discharge capacity becomes 105 mega per hour per gram. And the interesting thing is that the average discharge voltage is high, uh, is very high, which is 4.3 volt, which is a way higher than the material. The radio material has a lower voltage than the three volt in the potassium ion barrier system. Therefore, the graphene metric energy density of this material becomes 450 watt hour per kilogram. And the charging and discharge profile shows identical, indicating the potassium extraction in insertion is highly impossible. When you take a look at the DQTV curve at the right-hand side, you observe multiple oxidation pairs and reduction pairs. And each oxidation reduction peaks are well matched, showing reversibility, good reversibility. And multiple peaks indicating multiple uh, page transition in this material. So to better understand the page transition, we use axis three x ray direction analysis. So first, the KB of uh, at, at the beginning of the charge convert to the uh, another page one of the pains of this material. As you can see, there is uh, additional peak evolution here and here and here. 
when you remove more potassium from this structure, we observe another two-page reaction. And additional peak evolution is evident. And when you remove further the potassium from this structure, we observe additional two-page reactions. And at the top of the charge, we can find uh, potassium removed free PFOF. And after this charge, the material uh, returned to the KVO4F structure. So it sh clearly shows that this material uh, goes through the multiple pa two-page reaction, and potassium extraction and the insertion process is highly possible. And it, this material shows a reasonable cycling stability. This, this maintains uh, around 77% of the 100 cycles without any modification. And interesting is that this material shows very high working voltage, actually highest voltage ever reported in potassium test materials. When you, com when, when you compare this material with others, it shows uh, very high board, a significant difference. The organic material sit in this area, very low voltage, and where the material has still have a low working voltage because potassium potassium distance is very short due to the two dimension of potassium arrangement. When you take a look at the Prussian blue analog that have three dimension of potassium arrangement, they have a higher working voltage than the rare the material. And polyanion groups also have high working voltage. Among these polyanion groups, this, our KB Pure app shows the highest voltage, which is very remarkably important. And when you compare all uh, many uh, cathode material and lithium sodium potassium batteries, we can have a uh, trend. When you take a look at the rare materials, the lithium system has very high energy density but it reduced in the sodium system and even further reduced in the potassium ion barrier system. That is why where the material is not good for potassium barrier system. When you take a look at Prussian blue system, lithium has a low energy density, but it increased in, in the uh, sodium and potassium system. When you take a look at polyanion groups, and why lithium Polyanion cathode have slightly higher energy density, but is still comparable to sodium and potassium or polyanion cathode materials. When you only compare the potassium ion barrier system, rarely is the worst in energy density. And polyanion and Prussian blues can be a good option because of a three dimensional potassium arrangement compared to the rare material. So we ha I have shown that the rare material is not a good cathode candidate anymore, while instead the, uh, the polyanion group and Prussian group can be a good option in potassium ion barrier system. From now on, I would like to more focus on how the intercalar ion species affect electrochemical property in a fixed cathode framework. So in this system, I use KB F as a model system. Uh, first of all, I removed all the potassium from this structure using the electrochemical method and then reassembled the cell in potassium and sodium and lithium cell. And I compared the, the charge and discharge profile. Here, the K the VPOF cancer shows very high voltage in the potassium system and high uh, reasonable capacity. When you change to intercalator ion to sodium and lithium to capacity maintained, but voltage change significantly. In the sodium system, it shows 3.98 volt. In the lithium system, it shows 3.96 volt. And in the cycling stability, in all sodium and potassium and lithium system, they show the similar cycling stability. For example, they maintained around 77 to 79% of the capacity of the 100 cycles. The interesting thing is that sodium intercalation voltage is even higher than lithium intercalation. In, in, com, in commonly, 
we know that the lithium intercalation voltage is higher than sodium intercalation. However, we observe uh, opposite behavior in this system. When you take a look at the voltage, we have, when, you, when you convert the voltage to versus standard hydrogen electron, this trend becomes more obvious. The lithium intercalation voltage is a way lower than sodium and potassium intercalation voltage. So what's the origin of this uh, behavior? To understand this behavior, we have computed the structure of KVP of F and sodium VP of F and lithium VP of F. Interestingly, potassium and sodium sites are similar in, the, in this framework. And however, the lithium is very tiny compared to the sodium potassium and compared to the void space here. So lithium ions cannot sit in the exactly same size of sodium or potassium in this framework. Instead, they uh, move to uh, different sites. For example, lithium two sites very different with the sodium two site, and it's also very different from the sodium one site. Right. That makes a big difference in the distance between a calcium ion and vanadium in this structure. So for example, potassium vanadium distance is 3.56 Armstrong, and sodium vanadium distance is 3.4 Armstrong. However, lithium vanadium distance is very short, which is only 3.17 Armstrong, which makes a lithium site energy destabilized. Another thing is that lithium site is unusually coordinated. The Y lithium ions are uh, coordinated by four on ion, either two oxygen and two fluorine or four oxygen. They are plenary coordinated. Therefore, the lithium site energy can be further destabilized in this uh, structure. In the battery system, Mm, the voltage is determined by charge and discharge product, right? But in our system, we use all the time same charge state, VP of L. So the voltage will only be determined by discharge structure. And if the lithium site is destabilized, I mean the energy goes up, the difference between charge and discharge state will decrease. Therefore, we observe voltage lowering in the lithium system. We also we observed another interesting thing that the rate capability of the lithium intercalation is worse than the potassium and sodium. We use the, uh, the rate capability here. Uh, here, the potassium intercalation and sodium intercalation shows a very similar rate capability, but lithium rate capability becomes worse here, right? When you compare in this way, it is more highlighted. At lower rate, they have very similar um, capacity, but at, when you take a look at the higher rate, the difference of the capacity becomes significant. Usually, um, we believe that the smaller lithium will have a higher rate capability because small, smaller ion size will make more freedom to move around, right? However, this research is opposite what they have now. The reason is that the lithium is so tiny, so lithium migration pathway is different with the uh, sodium and potassium. Right, that's the one reason. And the other reason is that lithium is so tiny compared to the void spaces. So lithium, uh, when lithium ion migrate through this structure, in the transient site especially, lithium ion is under coordinate only by a uh, two on ion. That is why the lithium ion migration barrier is higher than sodium and potassium. So for example, uh, sodium and potassium have very similar migration barrier, but lithium ion has higher, higher barrier when they are migrate in, through this structure because lithium ion in this transition site uh, are under coordinate only by two an ion. So in this uh, study, we have learned that uh, 
large void space is not always good. We have to tune the void space depending on what kinds of color ion we would like to interconnect in the structure. So in summary, we have developed several raised materials, including potassium cobalt oxide, potassium manganese oxide, and potassium chromium oxide. However, we found that red material is no longer good cast candidate for potassium and barium because of their uh, potassium deficient composition and slope voltage profile that make low energy. Here, we suggest that polyanine group can be a good option because they have three dimensional potassium arrangement and high voltage. As an example, we provide a KP buffer app which has high voltage of 0.3 volts and high capacity around 105 minutes per program. And in the last of this presentation, we learned that large uh, capacity size is not very good for the first alkali ion interpolation. So we have tuned the void space capacity size depending on what kinds of alkali ions we want to interpolate in the structure. So uh, lastly, I would like to thank to the sponsors. So this work is supported by Edge Chemistry and Korean National Research Foundation and ECS Fellowship. And I'd like to give special thanks to the collaborators, including Professor Dong Asher, Governor Cesar, and UC Sato for the communication support, and Professor Jiechel Kim, Shuang and Dr. Matteo Bianchini for the deep uh, active discussion in this project. Uh, these are the related uh, researchers I have published. So if you are interested in potassium ion batteries and how alkali ion uh, species affect electrochemical properties, uh, feel free to uh, read these papers. And if you have questions, uh, please contact me. Uh, I'll try to uh, answer your question. Thank you for your attention.